What's up YouTube, Christo here. Very, very long time since I've done a record video. I uh, decided to keep up my old content, but since I've upgraded my camera, and obviously very significantly, I thought I'd kind of go back and redo everything uh, as well on top of that. Pretty much everything is updated to the point it would just take way too long for me to go back and um, only show stuff that I hadn't shown before. So I thought I'd just kind of start from scratch again, but keep up my old stuff, my old content. So I'm going to start with a few collection videos of specific artists and then kind of work my way through my collection, um, go through A to Z without those significant um, collection, you know, significant artist collections in there. And I've got a picture of my collection in the background because you know that adds credibility when someone sits in front of a record collection. Um, they... Uh, are automatically an expert. Anyways, so I'm here to go through my OC's album. So I have a lot of them. I'm going to go through specifically their full-length albums or what are considered to be their full-length albums. And this is going to go way back when they were still called OC's, like OCS, OC's. And it's going to go right up to pretty close to the newest album, but I'll kind of get there when I get there and I'll address that. So let's get into it. I do have pretty much everything they've recorded, almost everything they've recorded, um, and I've got almost every single full-length album, and I've got some stuff that I'm going to show in another video that's going to be like EPs, splits, um, seven inches, um, CDs, and things like that. So there are going to be a few things mentioned in there that aren't in here. So, uh, the first, first vinyl recording by um, the OCs, I believe the only things that predate this that are accessible with the OCs uh, name are um, cassette or CD only. So this is Songs About Death and Dying. This is the Yik Yak version. Uh, hand silk screened and I know let me just check okay so this one is not numbered but it is a limited edition um, it looks very similar to the rotted tooth version that I also have really nice heavy um, cardboard here all silk screened which is cool I just love that DIY touch for so many reasons I've got the insert here I like that. The, um, oh, who is it? Um, that boring British band. I can't even remember their name. Um, but yeah, their kind of take on that cover they did. And, um, this is on solid white vinyl. They don't even have anything on the labels. You literally have to, like, read the Matrix, um, to find out which side of that side A I just checked. But um, yeah, this is great. I think this is, uh, it's so first of all, it's so completely different. If you're not familiar with the OCs, OCS kind of era OCs, um, even if you've heard Memory of a Cutoff Head, this is still so different from that. It's so lo-fi, it's so DIY, um, just such a completely different sound than even the first The OCs or The OCs era stuff. Um, this is my rotted tooth version. This one is numbered. You can kind of see the slight difference in the back between Yik Yak and rotted tooth. Um, and this is exactly the same. It's got the same insert. It's got the same just kind of like plain white labels and everything. So I'm not even going to get into it. Um, next one. Uh, I am going to go chronologically as well. Get Stoved. This is, um, again, the OC, OCS, OC's era that is pretty similar. Um, very minimal, folky, freak folk, train yard folk. Um, this is, uh, I do actually have an insert for this. Or is it an insert or a custom? 
think it might be a custom uh, uh, jacket for this, or custom sleeve, but it's kind of getting ruined. The person I got it from didn't take very good care of it. Um, so again, this is kind of like semi-translucent red vinyl and um, nothing on the labels again. Um, there's a, like a hand-drawn custom sleeve for it. I do have it, but one of the corners is coming undone. And I typically change out the um, inner sleeves for, uh, if they're kind of like rare custom ones, I'll switch them out, which this one is. So I do have it. I don't think this one came with an insert. I think it was just that custom inner sleeve. Very recently reissued. This is the reissue, I believe. Yeah, it has to be. It's got a sticker on it. Um, the Cool Deaths of Island Raiders. The Cool Death of Island Raiders. I always get the S in there wrong. Um, I got to admit, I was kind of disappointed with the reissue of this. Um, it's It didn't sound great, in my opinion, which Castleface have been really good with... Uh, keeping quality pressings, and this is the original, like the black version, it's not a colored version, because I know there's people who throw like catatonic fits about colored vinyl sounding inferior, which there is truth to, to an extent, but it's very much grossly exaggerated. It's typically just mixed color vinyl, where you'll get a difference when it's pressed at a high quality um, and that's just like the black version. It sounds like crap. Um, this is the original pressing. There was only one version of this until recently. Um, on Narnak as well. So kind of like a yellowy, yellowy, orangey kind of pressing. Good record. I like it. It's not my favorite. Um, early... The OCs, the OCs album, but it's good. There are a few tracks on here that are very, very good. Very dreamy, um, jangly, um, lo-fi. Um, good record, but not my favorite. This is my favorite early OCs album. The OCs, the OCs. Sucks blood. I love this record. Um, the opening track on here, It Killed Mom, is so awesome. I absolutely love it. Which one's this? This is just my black pressing. Um, and I do have a couple variants of this. Great record, strange art, and um, there's no tracks listed on this. Nowhere on it. And I do also have... Which one's this? This is the Blood Splatter, I can see. The Blood Splatter variant. And that means this is the gray variant. Great record. I love it. I really, really love this album. Um, it took me a while to get into it because I was kind of introduced to the OCs, you know, well after they had, you know, kind of established themselves and released like, a, I don't know, maybe not quite a dozen, probably close actually, but, you know, a lot of records. And that was kind of a, a shock to my system because I pretty much only heard the heavier, newer stuff, newer or middle era stuff. I didn't really love it at first, but it's really grown on me, especially It Killed Mom. So, The Hounds of Foggy Notion, this got reissued recently as well, although it, there were several pressings of it. It was very rare, um, very coveted, crazy stupid prices on the original pressings. So I got a black copy here, an original black copy, like a modern black pressing of this, and it sounds terrible as well which is kind of, I don't know, seeming to be a theme with the OC's reissues. Um, this and the, the, the Cool Death of Island Raiders has been pretty crappy. But I do have four of the early um, 
who did this album before? I don't even remember. Nothing on here. I know, I'm pretty sure it wasn't Castle Face. It could have been, though. Um, so this is, uh, the, I can't remember which order. Okay, this is the clear one, so I think this is one of the newer reissues, but it was still, like, long, 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 out of print, um, rare, hard to find kind of thing. And then, of course, once the, um, the modern reissues were, uh, announced the prices, everyone started listing them and the prices went down. This is actually a gatefold. Um, but I have the plastic on, so I'm not going to open it up. Because the other versions are slightly different. So these are actually just like... Um, instead of like the... I don't know, how would you say it? Like... The record housed with the gatefold. This is just like a single fold. Um, really cool art. I love this album. I love the album artwork. Um, which I believe is John Dwyer. I believe he did the album art for that one and a few of the early uh, albums. So this is like kind of bright yellow pressing. And these sound vastly, vastly superior to the new version. Um, pipe sticker still on this one too. And this one is as well, um, just like the open sleeve there. That's the kind of forest green. And that means this one is white. And this one as well just opens like that. So the clear one, that's how I know the clear one is the uh, the more modern pressing because it came with the actual gatefold inside. Now this is probably overall, probably my favorite OC's album. I genuinely love this record. The Master's Bedroom is worth spending a night in. I believe that's... a Full title. I always mess it up. The master's bedroom is worth spending a night and nailed it. Um, so I believe this is my black pressing. Yeah, I've got the sleeve on it, so that will be the black. Is that? Let me check. Actually, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, that is because I've got a mangled corner on the top. So that's my black pressing. Nothing special. Um, still a phenomenal record. And then I have. A few variants of that. This is the Coke bottle. This is... Which one is this? That's the yellow. Oh yeah, you can see right there the yellow in the top corner. Which means, oh, I thought this one had a sticker. This is the purple, which I like. I like the purple the most. I like that. But um, such a phenomenal record, and I, I love, it's just so spacey and trippy, but still really lo-fi. Um, the OC sound really good. Um, well produced, which is interesting because a lot of bands, they sound awesome when they're lo-fi and then when they increase their production level, they start, you know, they lose something, they kind of lose that raw edge or whatever, but the OC sound awesome lo-fi and they sound very awesome, well produced. Although there isn't an interesting crossroads there, but I'll get to that a little bit later. But yeah, I genuinely love this record. Um, what's the last track on here? You will see this dog before you die. I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, help. Um, it took me a little while to get into this record. It's really poppy and it is starting to get a little bit better produced, but it's, it's definitely more like kind of 70s, more mainstream psychedelic influence, which is okay. It's grown on me, but I still heavily prefer Master's Bedroom. So the pink variant... I think I sold my black variant to this. Um, this is, I know this one's colored. I don't remember which one it is though. So it's got the custom inner, inner sleeve. 
Orange, I like that. Kind of semi-translucent orange. Pretty cool. So then, oh, I've got two more of these. Maybe I do have my original black one still, I don't recall. I know I've got, okay, yeah. That's the kind of semi-translucent red. And then this one will be, I believe my neon green. Yeah, that's cool, I like that. Never able to track down a um, one of the rainbow splattered version uh, versions of that. It looks so cool, but it's it's expensive. It's hard to find and not paying what it's going for, considering I have the other ones and it's not my favorite OC's record. Um, Dog Poison. This is one of the limited edition versions. They did two limited editions um, with kind of like opposite colors, if that makes sense. So. My version is solid blue with like translucent red, and then there's a translucent blue with solid red. Um, I got this for what I would consider a pretty good price, um, shipped to Canada, but um, I've never been able to find, this is variant B or variant two. Um, I've never been able to find variant one for a good price. And again, considering I have pretty much the same thing here and I don't really love this record, um, I'm not gonna, not going to fork out what it's going for. It's interesting because I've definitely watched OC's records go from like okay to kind of modest mid price to just like skyrocketing through the roof. But they have gotten really, really big in the last few years, which is cool because, um, you know, John Dwyer, Castleface, they're just a really, you know, he's a great guy, super nice, humble, friendly. And it's a, a great record label that's doing cool things. Warm Slime, I think this record's really underrated for an OC's album. Um, a lot of people will go to Master's Bedroom, they'll go to um, Fun, you know, whatever for, for their favorite, but I very rarely, if ever, have ever heard anyone say Warm Slime's their favorite. Except for a couple of the, the, the tracks on the B side, which I'm certain are live, but I can't find any you know, where they recorded, um, when they were recorded, nothing like that. Um, they're definitely live though. Um, this is the splatter variant, which I think looks really cool as well. Um, I think this is a great record, really great record, totally overlooked. The title track, the opening track, Warm Slime is like 17 minutes of just like spacey kraut rock. Really, really cool. Love that record. One of the favorite, my favorite covers the OCs ever did, Castle Mania. Um, this is the uh, kind of, I don't know, beer yellow or pea yellow kind of variant, which is interesting because the second disc is black, which I don't think was a, uh, I think that's how it went. Disc A was clear or disc A was um uh, the colored version and disc B. Well, that's what I got at least. Maybe not everyone did. And then this has an etching on it. And you can see my living room and my light and my kitchen. Um, it's like flowers. Which is cool. I like, I like etchings. I don't have many of them, but I like them. They're kind of cool. Um... Carrion Crawler, really good record. I think this is kind of a fan, like a serious fan favorite, like people who really, really are into the OCs um, will often cite this as their favorite or a very easy album to listen to. Um, and I, I totally agree with the exception of the Chem Farmer, the, the um, instrumental, I don't really like it. It's not that I hate it. I just think it kind of changes the pace, changes the, um, sound of the album and then switches right back but it's all right it's not terrible putrefiers too um there's a few tracks on this that i like but overall um this is kind of middle of the road ocs for me um it does have a die cut the the little man face on the dog and the little dog in the coffin on the back those are die cuts um never really did a uh colored pressing of this um, maybe Castle Face will do one. A 
Floating Coffin, awesome record. I love this. So I started listening to them a little bit after Floating Coffin came out. And um, I loved it. I was just like, wow, this is such a good record. I need to buy it. Um, this is uh, the Newberry uh, white and red split with black splatter. Um, I think that one looks pretty cool. And this will be, I actually have another variant in the mail, but I'm just going to do an update with that a little bit later. Which one's this? Okay. This is the um, strawberry short, the first kind of strawberry shortcake um, pressing, because they did two like really close to each other, but they actually have different runouts, which is interesting, because Castle Face, I've never actually seen them do exactly the same color pressing, or color, you know, a year after the last one. Usually they're like something completely different, but that's me as a kind of, Strictly an OC spin. There's not much on the label that really, really, really impresses me other than them and a few other artists, but they're the big one for me. So this is an interesting album, Drop. Um, this, I, I, okay, so I mentioned before about them sounding good and then sounding good as lo-fi and them sounding good as well-produced. This is a weird album for me. I, I still kind of struggle with this. It's really well-produced. But I find that there's just something about it that makes it sound more like a really well-produced album put together by, you know, high school kids in their parents' garage kind of thing. Um, it just doesn't suit them. Like, I don't know, there's something about this album that I just, I don't like, I've never really liked. There's some good tracks on it, but I don't find it to be like a really... Um, necessary OC's album. So this is the Versace Vomit variant. And this is the um, Golden Teeth edition. And I watched prices fluctuate on this like crazy. So I really wanted it, but I didn't want to pay like a hundred bucks, which is just ridiculous for an album that I don't love. Um, and it started going down. I grabbed a copy and then it went up and then it goes down and I don't know It's weird record flippers are strange. They're a strange breed There's a custom. Oh, no, it's an insert. Is it an insert? Oh, no, it is a custom sleeve Ah, okay, so this is an important record for me um, this kind of just like changed Let's say indie rock for me. Um, I've never really heard anything like this, and I think Mutilator shows a significant change in their sound. So they did change a lot between, like, you know, let's say um, going from Help to um, uh, Drop to, or to um, Floating Coffins to Drop. Then to this, I was kind of like, some of that middle era stuff I'm not really huge on, but this is awesome. This is just in a league of its own. Uh, I, I love this. This is so well done. The production on this, the musicianship on this is just stellar. Um, this is the uh, Black Splatter edition. Um, I love this record so much. It's just like psychedelic, spacey, trippy metal. Um... I know that's kind of what a lot of the OCs do now, but I think this is the absolute pinnacle of modern OCs. Uh, and I've got a couple variants of this. I've also got... Oh yeah, this is cool. This is Flightless, um, the Australian label, their variant, um, which is like clear with an, an orange blob. And someone... I. I posted this on, I don't know, I think it was a record collecting group on Facebook, and someone's like, looks like someone spilled the orange paint on a window pane. I was like, that's cool, I like that. I'm going to use that description. And that means this is the yo cough syrup? Yeah, cough syrup or yogurt or whatever it was um, variant. But I, I love this record. I think it just sounds so good um, in every way. Love it, absolutely love it. And the final track, what is it, Palace Doctor? 
So good. Oh, such a good way to close this record. So I think this is kind of the album that the OCs took off with. Um, it was getting a lot of really, really positive reviews from critics. And I like it, but I was reading the reviews and I heard, I think, like Ticklish Warrior um, before I bought the album. And I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, and I bought the album and a lot of the stuff. Dead Man's Gun and Ticklish Warrior. Yeah, I think those were the first, like, the singles or they were released or those are what I heard and I loved them. Uh, and I still do, but the rest of the record, there's it's kind of hit and miss for me. This is the green, green variant. I don't love the whole thing start to finish. I still think Mutilator is um, the best of this kind of new era of um, OCs. And uh, the second disc has the spider etching. You kind of see it. But the etching's the same. The etching's the same as on the black version. I think this is the UK, UK indie exclusive. So I actually um, was buying the murky web version, and um, they sent me the green version because it was coming from the UK. And I was like, yeah, I'm happy. It, it, it's interesting. It's something I can't really find in North America, and uh, it's more limited, which is cool. So this album here, I gotta say, this was. The first time that I was truly and genuinely disappointed by the OCs. Um, still can't even remember the name. And Odd Entrances, I, I didn't like this. I still don't really like it. I've tried listening to it a few times. And it doesn't really do much for me. It's called The Companion to an Odd Exits. Um, this is the kind of Coke bottle, foggy, um, clear, kind of off-clear version. Um, but I just, I don't like it. And I think this kind of marked significant, uh, you know, milestone for the OCs. Um, not in a good way either. So the next album, I don't know, Orc. There's a few tracks in this that are awesome, but it's the first time where the OCs had tracks that didn't sound like them, if that makes sense. So this is okay. So this is the UK bone colored edition i did pre-order this from the uk it's interesting it's actually cheaper for me to get records shipped from the uk than from the us um and i don't think castle face did uh pre-orders with the colored variants as i recall if they did they sold out so quickly i couldn't get them um okay so there's a few tracks on this that are awesome like really awesome um the drowned beast is so good, so, so good. But there's like moments on this album where they don't sound like the OCs. They sound like a stoner metal band or something like that. Um, I, I don't know. It just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I got a variant before I decided or before I realized I didn't really like this album. I had already ordered this from someone online who I don't know why I got it super cheap guild the gilded axe head or something like that um they sold it like immediately and there's like a little ding in one of the corners or something I know there's like a slight imperfection and I got it for like 20 bucks plus shipping like 30 bucks Canadian which is just ridiculous like you couldn't even buy the original black version of that in the in a record store here for that much and I got it, and I didn't really like it. It's not terrible. Maybe I'll warm up to it later, but it just, I don't know. It was just one in a run of the OCs that I didn't like. So going back to OCS, OCs, Memory of a Cut-Off Head, I did not like this at all. Like, genuinely at all. It's so overproduced and clean, and um, just, I didn't like it. I really didn't. And I love songs about death and dying. I love um, Get Stoked, although I'll say songs about death and dying I prefer. Um, I just didn't like this at all. Really cool record pressing though. Um, limited version. I don't know. I think people typically liked this, but um, I, I, I was really let down by it. Um, I don't know if everybody loved it. I know I've seen kind of 
moderate to positive reviews of this typically, um, and I just didn't like it. So Smoke Reverser, the last full album that is like, you know, properly in circulation. Um, I, I must have fallen victim to someone putting up their band as the OCs. So when this first was announced as a pre-order, um, I was like, man, I've had a bad track record with the OCs lately. I don't really like the last three albums they did. And the one they did before that was just kind of good. Um, or had moments of greatness, but didn't stay consistent. And I saw the cover and I was like, man, I don't know what the heck they're doing here. If this is going to be like a death metal record or like black metal or something, I have no idea. And then a song came out and I'm. it must have been someone putting their band in the OC's like kind of image on YouTube because I have not heard that song on this album and it was really heavy and abrasive and you know doesn't sound anything like this album so when I did finally get this record which was actually quite recently considering it's been out for like a year or so really love this um I can't remember what it is um there's a couple of variants uh but I think this one looks cool. I love the color, like that kind of wispy, smoky marble. Um, but yeah, it's actually a lot better than I thought. I, I don't know. I must have... I don't know. Maybe there was an un, a track that wasn't finally on the album that I heard. Because it didn't really sound like OCs. But then, you know, like Orc, there was stuff on there that I think didn't really sound like OCs. You know, like John Dwyer's vocals, his guitars you know, their percussion, which are, you know, quite noticeable. So there they are. That's my OC's LP collection. I'm not ranking them. I'm not giving them a score. I'm not reviewing them. Just going through my variants. I know I talked about which ones I liked and didn't and whatever, but I will actually do an OC's ranked, um, where I go through and rank pretty much all those that you saw there, plus a couple others that are only on CD um, that I have as well. Which I think I've only got the one. The other one is quite elusive. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you appreciate the upgrade of quality, the slightly better background, the better lighting, etc, etc. Um, I'm hoping to make some further improvements as well soon. But um, yeah, I think it's definitely looking better than uh, it did before. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you again soon.